We need an aggressive solution here. We need a real leader here. You need to press the red button. You need to kill as much as possible. This is the only solution. This is a scary question that Musa alayhi salam left with. So how does he respond to this criticism? He says something so scary, they became heroes of this ummah because the first thing they declared is we don't fear death. I'm the one trying to save our country and you traitors are going to side with the enemy. And then they, they said openly, وَمَا تَنْقِبُ مِنَّا and what is this anger that you have towards us? Why do you want this kind of revenge against us? The only crime we've apparently committed is we believe in the revelations that were, have come to us. The truth that has come to us. We accept the truth, the revealed truth. This is the real reason you hate us. This is the real reason you want us destroyed. Rabbana afrig alayna sabran wa tawaffana muslimi. Our master, pour sabr over us. And give us death as Muslims. Look at this du'a. Tawaffana muslimin. Take us away as Muslims. They are already prepared to die. They've accepted it. Now the only concern is not if I'm going to die. Now the only question is how am I going to die? The question has changed. Now their behavior is not dictated by I don't want to die. Now their behavior is dictated by I want to die doing the right thing. I want to die believing the right thing. I want to die in a state of Islam. How I want to die. The question about death has completely changed for them. The problem now is, even Fir'aun is starting to question, is this the right policy? Because there's a lot of public backlash. People are questioning what I'm doing. I'm about to, because this is in uh, Al-A'raf, other places in the Quran. I mentioned this in a previous khutbah. He was ready to commit genocide. Kill everybody. But he hadn't taken that step yet. He's thinking about it. What should be the media, what should be the strategy here? Because we need to do something militarily, but before we do something militarily successfully, we need to make sure we control the media too. And if the media gets out of control, we need to make sure how to rein it back in. You know, who, who's the troublemaker in the media? We need to let them know or figure out a way to solve that problem. He's still deliberating, but some people within his administration, there's two opposite groups. One group within his administration accepted Islam, like I just showed you. They were part of his government. There's another group inside his government. And they're like, no, 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 no. We need an aggressive solution here. We need a real leader here. You need to press the red button. You need to kill as much as possible. This is the only solution. So within the government, those who accepted Islam, and within the government, those who say blood. We just want blood. That's all. This is the only solution. And they're both, now, those are the two extremes. And maybe silent sil ones in the middle. But here's what Allah tells us. The, the generals. The military commanders, because military commanders, the only solution they like is a military solution, right? So what did they start telling Fir'aun? They, they're his advisors. They say, Musa wa Oh, so you're going to just leave them? You're going to leave them alive? Musa and his people? Fil ardi? So they can keep creating more problems in the country? These people are a problem. You can't leave them alone. If you don't find a solution for this now, this problem will keep coming back. You're just going to let them keep doing that? They're the ones causing fasad. So what's the logic of the military commanders? Their military commanders are saying, look, these people are too much trouble. The only solution is they all need to die. That's the only way you can solve this problem. Are you serious about solving the problem or not? Are we going to solve this problem once and once and all, once and for all or no? And they said they're not they're leaving you and they're leaving your religion. It's interesting. They didn't talk about the religion first, they talked about him first. They're going to question you. They might undermine your power. The government officials were telling their leader, Firaun, listen, if you don't kill them, it's gonna make you look weak. Your presidency might be in trouble. You might get in trouble in the next elections. Don't look weak. This is not a good look for you. We need a strong leader. Not to mention, they also want to leave your religion, meaning they don't follow your way. So you know what? You need to have a solution. And he says, we will slaughter their children, let their women live. I've given the previous khutbah about this. And then we, will, we, we are dominant over them. Now, with the, re the real reason I wanted to share this khutbah with you is what was the response of Musa alayhi salam to this overwhelming campaign? I want you to understand something. 
Firaun was one of the most dominant military powers on the planet. And the Israelites were helpless people. They didn't have a standing army. They were completely, they were living in an open air prison. They were encamped. They couldn't escape. They were basically just civilians. And the, the, the Firaun's army could go in and do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. And nobody can question them. This was the situation. So in this situation, Musa alayhi salam is supposed to give a khutbah to his fellow believers that are stuck inside that prison. What is he going to tell them? How is he going to address them? What's the solution for them? He says to them, alayhi salam, Ista'inu billahi wasbiru. Seek Allah's help. Continue to have sabr. The, the, the land, the earth belongs to Allah. He gives this land and inheritance to whoever he wants. Min ibadi from among his slaves. And the final end, the last laugh, the end victory can only be for people who have taqwa. That's it. That's all he gives them. But you know, there are some people in the audience that have strong iman. They hear this and they say, this is enough for us. Like the magicians. It was enough for them. Other people said, come on. We're the ones getting killed here. You're going to give us khubba about iman? Give us a real solution. This is not a real solution. This is just, oh, you're making us feel better. How do we get rid of this problem? So the next ayah is about the people... For them, when he said to them, the earth belongs to Allah, Allah has a plan for you. You need to not lose your iman. This is the most important asset. The most important, the most valuable treasure that the believer has is not the land, is not their life, it's actually their iman. And the magicians understood this because they said, the one thing we cannot afford to lose is our iman when we're dying. They understood this. But there are others who said the following. Listen to this ayah, and I'll conclude with this ayah. They said, before you came, they talked to Musa, his followers, some of his followers. They said, before you came, we were being tortured. After you came, we're being tortured. What good are you? How are you a solution? Because in their mind, if you're following Islam, if you're following the right religion, it should solve all your problems. Life should be good. Money should become easy. Health should become easy. Safety should become easy. You should become the superpower because you believe in Allah. Once you believe in Allah, you should have everything in dunya, the best of it. And where you're supposed to be the prophet. You came. When you came, life should, dunya should have become Jannah. How come you came and before you came, we were getting beat up by Fir'aun? And after you came, we're still getting beat up by Fir'aun? What good are, what's, what's your point? What's your purpose even? We don't see any difference. Whether you're there or you're not there. Now Musa salam could answer that question. Because that's what they said to him. When he gave him this khutbah. This is how they responded. Imagine a, a prophet of Allah giving a khutbah. And some people in the Jumu'ah itself. Or whenever he gave this khutbah to them. They start talking back. In the middle of the khutbah. So how does he respond to this criticism? He says something so scary. And I wanted to end with this. And I, I hope this is the thought that leaves me and you thinking for a while. What did Musa alayhi salam say to them? Listen to this. He said, Asa rabbukum an yuhlika aduwakum. It's quite possible that Allah will destroy your enemy. It's very possible that Allah will destroy your enemy. The pharaohs and their dynasties lasted several centuries. And Allah ended the Fir'aun's reign in one minute in the water. For Allah... He can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, how quickly he wants. This is not a big, this may be a big problem for me. This may be a big problem for someone else. This is not a big problem for Allah. First thing he says is, it may be that Allah will destroy your enemy. First. Then he says, And once he destroys your enemy, he will give you power over the land. So your enemy is gone. Who's going to take over? You will take over. He'll make you powerful. So far, this sounds like I should give a takbir. Wow, the enemy will die. I will win. I will have power over the land. That's not where he ended. Then he said, Then Allah will observe, How do you behave? 
Allah will observe, how do you be? So right now your enemy is Fir'aun. And he acts in this way. And maybe Allah will destroy him. And maybe after destroying him, he will give you the kind of power once he gave to Fir'aun. And then he will see, are you any different from Fir'aun or are you turning into Fir'aun yourself? We'll see how you do. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Qur'an all the way to the point where they can have a deep, profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in and don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.